Hey everyone, happy, happy Sunday. So it's me again, Shakti. If this is your first time hopping on, welcome to my page. My name is Shakti Rios. I'm a health and fitness coach. I'm also a metaphysician, intuitive, and I work in these realms of the spiritual and the material and what do they mean? How do they work together? How do they affect each other? This is a really, really important conversation, especially right now. And I was quite pleasantly surprised when I went to service um, this morning and this was what the conversation was about. And of course, everything is always alignment and synchronicity and you're always at the right place at the right time and that's just the way that it is. And the conversation was extremely interesting and it, it took it to a place that I don't take it often when I do videos as far as like how this shift in consciousness is affecting us from like an economical standpoint and an ecological standpoint, but it was an important component of the conversation. And I wanted to, to hop on here. I took notes because I go to church and take notes. That's, that's how I roll. I don't just go to church. I take notes because to me, the type of spiritual gatherings that I attend, um, the communities that I happen to be a part of, it's not just about showing up and going to church. It's about what are you going to do when you walk out of these doors with what you've taken away from being in this experience. And so to me, that's really, really important. And that's one of the primary reasons that I attend. I don't attend just for to say that I did and check it off a box. I attend because I think it's an important part of my cognitive development and my spiritual development as an ambassador on this planet, as a member of planet Earth, I think it's important that I continue to develop myself cognitively and spiritually so that I can continue to serve the planet the way that the planet needs to be served in my own personal mission, whatever that mission is. So I think it's it's my personal responsibility to make time for stuff like this and then to walk away with something that I can then show up and share with you guys. So that's what this conversation is about. So. The Great Turning is actually a documentary. Um, it was created by a woman called Joanna Macy, which I don't know anything about, but I will definitely be binge researching her after I finish this video. Um, and she is an environmentalist and she pretty much approaches this conversation of like, how is our society, our global society, beginning to become highly unsustainable. And this is not a new conversation. I think for years we've been on this really unsustainable path. And what can we do as participants of this global community to ensure that we create a more sustainable way of living, which is, I think, the conversation we should be having right now. So this movement, this shift in consciousness is being called the greatest social movement in history because it is no longer about a segment of our population needing a voice or to be seen or be heard. It is now like as a global community, as members of planet Earth who reside on this planet, we have to wake up together to make sure we don't wipe ourselves off the map. And as Melanie was saying, who is our spiritual leader at this community and was giving this talk, she said, for the first time in history, we as a collective of humans cannot say, no matter what happens, life will go on because there's no assurance that that will be the case. That is the degree to which we have stripped our planet of valuable resources that we're coming to a point where we cannot say that we will just continue on like we've always continued on. And so this, this revolution, this idea that we as a global community need to come together and wake up and take responsibility for our individual roles on this planet is huge. And it now marks this this great turning as being the largest social movement ever in the history of the world. She shared a quote from, uh, I think it was Jack Kornfield. She, she referenced the book, I think it's called a, The Path of Heart or something like that. I, again, will be researching this when I am done with this video. But she mentioned there was a quote in the book where he said, whatever path you pick, make sure it is a path with heart. And her point being 
that we are we are living in a time where we are collectively waking up and many of us individually are waking up to truths truths that for one reason or another we were asleep to prior to this moment in history this moment in time and now that we're waking up and now that we are opening our eyes and our consciousness to information and experiences that we didn't have prior to this moment We are, as a collective, beginning to recognize the need for a conscious shift in how we live. And we are being called to rise into that on an individual level as well as a collective level. And I believe this is why we are seeing so many people on this like entrepreneurial wavelength where we are becoming a society of entrepreneurs. We are moving away from being employees even in the mindset we are moving away from working for another individual or for another cause and we're moving towards working for our own cause because there's some sort of intuitive understanding that we have that we are now really responsible for our role on the planet hi michelle thanks for hopping on yes i know i know you feel me girl so this, this taking ownership of our role on the planet is what gives life to so many new ideas. And a lot of the new ideas that are being born in our collective right now are sustainability ideas, are how can I make a business that's greener? Or how can I make a business that's efficient without taxing our, our environment, our resources? How can we change the structure of corporations so we're no longer just looking at who's profiting and moving so that we ac- we accommodate them, but instead moving so we accommodate our planet as a, as a resource that it is, as a living, breathing being that it is. And she shared a really poignant story that I want to share with you guys. And apparently, um, Joanna Macy talks about this individual in her, in her book, in her documentary. She's written a lot of books, um, as Melanie shared. But it was about a man who is um, a forest ranger. I believe he was a forest ranger. And he really got into his heart that he wanted to stop illegal logging. He was just really passionate about that. And I, he ended up in a rainforest. And she couldn't remember the details of like where in the world where this illegal logging was happening. And he was standing there in front of all these bulldozers and police officers and machinery in the middle of this forest basically putting his body between the trees that they were about to log and the people who were attempting to illegally log them. And he had this epiphany in that moment that he was not a man trying to stop these people from logging these trees. He was a part of those trees. He was a part of the rainforest in the body of a man taking a stand for himself taking a stand and this makes me super emotional because I really want you guys to hear that this is at the core of the purest spiritual understanding you can have that you are not separate from the world around you not just the people around you but the world around you and then our earth is not just a pit of resources it is a living breathing being that is responding and reacting to everything that we are doing on this earth, on her. And when when she shared that story, I immediately started crying because what a powerful realization for you to have that you are a part of that very same rainforest that you are attempting to protect and you are a part of those very same animals that you are so passionate about protecting and you are a part of the environment that you so passionately want to take care of. We are a part of the planet in such an integral, we are so tied into this earth We are the earth. And if we don't realize that and wake up to that, the devastation of our planet is a devastation of our population. Because we are made of earth. We are made of stardust. The same thing this planet is made of, we are made of. And as a result, when we are depriving the earth of resources and we are abusing her and stripping her, we are doing that to us. We are doing that directly to us. It's not just about the earth being torn apart we are tearing ourselves apart and we are not realizing how this is corrupting us how this is affecting us that's the whole point of this great turning that we are as a collective waking up to this understanding and therefore there are so many initiatives being put into place to make a stand hence the marches that just happened yesterday all over 
And that takes me into what Joanna calls the three dimensions of the great turning. And one of them is activism. And, you know, just getting in the way, just getting in the way and being a disturbance uh, and being a, a physical marker of of standing up for something, right? So that's that's one of the dimensions of this great turning is activism. It's not gonna be the one that everybody gets involved with, but it has a very important role. And for those of us who do feel called to do that, then we must, because that is part of our karma. Our collective karma is to be alive here right now and take a stand in that way, if you feel called to do that. The second part is building sustainable structures. The second dimension is how can we build sustainable structures, sustainable housing, sustainable corporate structures, sustainable routines and structures in our own house, in our own homes, in our own lives, in our own beings, so that we are sustaining ourselves and then going out into the world and teaching sustainability to other people and being the example of sustainability to other people. And the third dimension is a shift in consciousness, which is what I talked about when I first started this video and how we as a collective are waking up to an understanding that we are changing, that the world is a changed place, the collective consciousness is a changed place, the universe is changing, we are in a shift like has never been seen before, and this is an integral part of our evolution as spiritual beings. The planet's evolution is our evolution. The shift to 5D that I've been talking about is our shift to 5D. Again, we are tied into the karma of our planet. We are not separate from the karma of our planet. And that is really important for us to recognize that how we change ourselves immediately impacts the collective consciousness and the karma of this planet. When you have a dream in your spirit, when you have a calling and you pursue it, you are adding to the collective consciousness the energy, the vitality, the hope, the inspiration that is an integral part of us moving forward in a positive direction in our evolution. When you say yes to your dreams, when you show up to what you care about, when you follow that crazy idea that other people might criticize you for, might call you crazy for, you are adding energy to the collective consciousness in the direction of hope and inspiration and sustainability. Freeze. Can you guys see me? I'm sorry. My thing froze. Someone messaged me and then it froze. So I hope you guys really hear this message. I hope that it jumps into your spirit and really sinks in and that you in this moment decide to take ownership of your story, of your path, of your impact, that you decide to take ownership and decide that all of those dreams that you have, you're going to go for and that you are going to start putting into the collective energy what you want to see of our world, not what you fear, not what you're afraid of, not but what you stand for. Stop going what you are against and start moving in the direction of what you are for because what we are for matters now perhaps more than ever. And she added a couple of other elements in her talk. You know, live from a place of gratitude. Practice daily gratitude for the fact that you're even alive, you're here on the planet during this incredibly pivotal moment in time for our human species is huge and that you can in any way contribute to this movement is powerful. So practice gratitude daily. Don't be afraid of the dark. Don't be afraid of the difficult emotions that you're going to feel experiencing the things we're experiencing in our country and on our planet. There are so many things that make my heart break on a daily basis and being an empath, it is so difficult to just take that in. But that's what we must do. We must not afraid of be afraid of experiencing those things. We need to learn how to take them into our hearts and just hold the space for them and know that it is always darkest before the dawn and that our responsibility as spiritual beings is to be able to have enough space within us to hold the suffering, to hold the suffering and just make space for it without being afraid, without running, without hating, without resisting. Just hold it, keep space for it. Link arms with others. Make sure that you are being a part of communities that uplift you, that inspire you, that, that make you feel light, that make you, that remind you of who you actually are. Make sure you are spending time in community circles that remind you of your truth, that remind you of who you are, that remind you that what you're here to do and why it's so important. Um, and dare to vision is the last thing. Dare to have a dream. Dare to have a vision for yourself, for your impact, for what you could create on this incredibly beautiful planet that is full of so many energetic and physical resources that you can in any way be a contributing factor to the success of our evolution as a 
as a species, right? So this is, this is the message I wanted to share with you guys and leave you with. It really touched me so deeply having her talk to us about this and waking up to my own personal sense of responsibility as an, as an energy leader, as I feel that I am, um, as an advocate for my role on the planet and this bridging of worlds between the material and the ethereal and how important it is to understand our role in both realms um, intimately. So this is, this is my way of saying I am committed to even stepping up larger and being more of an activist in, in my practice than I have ever been and creating those sustainable systems and being an advocate for the shift in consciousness. And I hope that you walk away from this video feeling like you are ready to do that too, because that, that is what our planet needs more than anything right now. It is not about our country. It is not about your country. It is about our planet because without our planet, where you're from doesn't fucking matter at all. Without a planet, it doesn't matter what color you are. Without a planet, it doesn't matter what fucking language you speak. Without a planet, none of that matters. So we need to stop separating ourselves by where we're from, what color we are, what we listen to, what language we speak. It doesn't fucking matter. Right now, our planet needs us. And the longer that you are living in a world of separation and making yourself separate from everyone else and judging the shit out of people, you don't have space in your heart to become awakened and take responsibility for your role on the planet. So let's do this shit for the planet. Let's get our, our mind right. Let's get it in the game and let's start to build things with love that are sustainable and that support longevity on this planet for all living beings. Yes? Can I get a hell yes? I hope you said hell yes when you heard that. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. Thanks so much for hopping on. Have a blessed Sunday and I will talk to you guys soon.